Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're coming up on the peak of summer heat and I'm down here by the river trying to cool off. I thought this was a good time to do a video on air conditioning, especially cheap and free air conditioning and how it works, the science behind it, and most of all, how you can make your own setup at home to try to cool off without spending very much money. I'm gonna start with direct evaporative cooling because it's super simple, effective, and energy efficient. It has a really interesting history going back thousands of years and you can keep your space cool for basically free in the right conditions. You can think of it like the cooling effect you feel when sitting by a waterfall or after a light rain. It's also how sweating works to cool us down. In this video, I'll break down the physics, share some fascinating historical examples from ancient civilizations, and then walk you through a few DIY builds you can try at home. So let's dive right in. Please remember likes and subscribes really help the channel grow. I love to see your questions and comments down below. And if you wanna help us directly, you can do that over on Patreon where you also get some bonus and behind the scenes content. Before we get into how evaporative cooling works, let's look at how people used it thousands of years ago. This isn't a new idea. Many ancient civilizations figured out ingenious and unique ways to harness water's cooling power thousands of years ago, long before electricity. First, in ancient Egypt, going back to at least 2500 BC, they would hang wet cloth and reeds in windows and doors. Hot desert air blowing through would evaporate the water, cooling the spaces inside. Some frescoes also show porous clay jars with holes filled with water and servants fanning them. As the water evaporated, it cooled the rooms for the pharaohs and nobles. In ancient Persia, as early as 4000 BC, homes were built with pools or water channels in them. They then built wind catchers, tall towers with chimney-like passages that would catch the breezes and direct them down through the building over the pools of water, increasing cooling and evaporation. They also had yakchals, which were domed ice houses that used evaporative cooling to make and store ice year round, even through the brutal desert heat. Thick walls, reed insulation, and water channels kept it all working. The Harapin civilization in the Indus Valley had a brilliant refrigerator system called zir pots going back as far as 3000 BC. They stored food in clay pots that would sit inside of another larger clay pot and in between there would be wet sand. The evaporation from the outer pot and the sand cooled the inner pot which would keep the food stored inside cool and fresh. And finally the ancient Greeks and Romans. They also hung wet cloth in doors and windows just like the Egyptians but they took it one step further and they built pools with fountains in atria which were open courtyards and the fountains would increase the exposed surface area of the water increasing the evaporation cooling the surrounding air naturally. These methods were simple but ingenious and highly effective and they're the inspiration for some modern day evaporative cooling like swamp coolers and some of the DIY ideas we'll be trying later in the video. Now for the science behind evaporative cooling. It's based on a natural process where water absorbs heat from the air as it evaporates. So as it turns from liquid to vapor, it cools the air temperature and increases the humidity. The energy required for water to evaporate is called the latent heat of vaporization, and it's a surprisingly large amount of energy. So basically what that means is as water evaporates, a large amount of heat is transferred from the air into the water vapor, which can substantially reduce the temperature of the surrounding air. For water at room temperature, the energy required to evaporate just two cups of water is about 970 BTUs. So to compare it to modern AC, evaporating just two cups of water in an evaporative cooler, which I'll show you how to do later in the video, is the equivalent to running a small window unit for 12 minutes. Now that's a huge amount of heat energy and it's absorbed from the surrounding air into the water vapor, cooling the air temperature substantially and it happens naturally all by itself. The total energy in the air stays roughly constant, but it's redistributed from the air temperature to humidity. Now we'll jump into the workshop and I'll show you a few quick and cheap ways to make your own DIY evaporative cooler. So first, the main goal is to evaporate as much water as you possibly can. Like I said before, if you can evaporate two cups of water, it can be roughly equivalent to running a small AC unit for 12 minutes. So if you can evaporate two cups every 12 minutes, it's the same as running an air conditioning unit. And to get the fastest evaporation we can, we need to increase surface area and we need to increase airflow. In a commercial swamp cooler, they generally use some kind of foam pad or honeycomb weave pad. And they'll be pretty thick with tons of holes and as much surface area as possible for the air to touch as it's passing through the pads. 
The next thing to really remember about these is that while they drop the temperature a lot, they also increase the humidity. If you live in a really dry place, that can be really nice and actually make the air much more comfortable. But if you live somewhere that's already 50% humidity, say, you don't really want to boost that to 70% because it can start to feel kind of clammy. So the best way to situate these is to have multiple open windows and doors so that as the air enters and becomes more cool and humid, it then passes through the dwelling and keeps going, carrying the humidity off with it. And then the last thing to mention is just to set expectations. The drier it is where you live, the more efficient this will work. If you live in a really dry place, say 20% humidity, this can drop temperatures up to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But as the humidity increases, it makes evaporation more difficult. And because the heat exchange happens during evaporation, less evaporation equals less cool temperatures. So if you live somewhere that's already 70% humidity, you might only drop four or five degrees. Okay, so let's do some demos. I've set up a mock window right here and I'll just demonstrate several different ways to make this kind of system work. So the first one is just a piece of cloth and this could be any scrap cloth. It could be an old t-shirt or anything. The tighter the weave, the less airflow is actually gonna pass through this. So this won't be too efficient, but if you just dunk it in some water and I'm just using some alligator clips here and all you have to do is hang this up and as the air passes through and around this, it's definitely gonna cause some evaporation and cooling, but it's gonna take quite a while to evaporate two cups of water. So the next thing we can do is we can cut some strips in the cloth, and this is gonna encourage more airflow. So while this is the same amount of fabric as the previous version, this is gonna increase the airflow and speed up the evaporation quite a bit. But I think something that'll work even better is burlap. So this is gonna allow a ton more air to flow through it and we can also layer it up. You could probably go five or six layers, maybe even eight or nine. It would need some testing to find out, but there's definitely gonna be airflow passing through this. And I think this with about six or seven layers would actually work quite well. So far the cost of doing this is basically free to a couple bucks at most. Now, if you live in a windy area, you don't really need to add airflow. You can just rely on the natural wind. But to increase efficiency even more, we can add a fan. Now, this is gonna increase efficiency by a huge margin and for relatively cheap because running a fan shouldn't require very much electricity. But now I wanna automate the water system because I don't wanna to have to redunk these every 10 minutes. So for that, I'm gonna use a small fish tank pump and a piece of tubing. Now this cost me about five bucks and this is only a couple bucks and this pump takes about 10 watts so it's not gonna draw very much electricity at all to run this all day long. First I'll just hook the tubing to the pump and next I just need to cap off the other end. You can either plug it up with something, I'm just gonna put two bends in it and then tighten that down with a rubber band. And next I'm just gonna put some small holes along maybe the first foot of the pump. You could use hard tubing for this like PVC pipe and drill holes in it. I'm just going to use some scissors and cut out some small holes because this tubing is really soft. And you might want to make the holes larger at the end and smaller as they get toward the pump and this might help even out the amount of water that comes out each hole. Next I'll take a piece of burlap that's longer than the other ones. I'm going to line it up with the end and then wrap it around several times. So the wrapped burlap should help capture any spray and then it'll all just trickle down along the different layers of burlap. Now the pump just goes in the reservoir and I need to fill that up. Okay, here we go. So now if we add the fan back in, we have a fully automated evaporative cooling system. If I was building a permanent system, I'd definitely look at PVC pipe for more consistent, reliable results. And I'd also consider buying either replacement pads for a swamp cooler or just experimenting with different fabrics. But overall, this would definitely help cool down your space in the right climate. If you've got any other ideas or ways to improve this, I'd love to hear it down below. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay cool and thanks for watching.